Um, so up next, we have Mike Wan with uh, eight omakase. I'm sorry, I'm butchering that. I apologize. Um, so uh, yeah, Mike, come on up. So you walk into a nice sushi restaurant, you push aside the menu, and you say omakase. What you just told the chef is I trust you, do what you do best. And what he serves you, his signature items, the freshest cuts, even throws in a surprise or two, all in a logical sequence. It's the ultimate service experience. And what eight omakase has done is taken that experience and brought it to men's fashion. And the reason why is the men's shopping experience is broken. Every moment we're at the mall means we're not watching the ball game with the beer in our hand. On top of that, when you do go to the mall and you find something you like, keep your fingers crossed, because it may not fit. Because nowadays you have slim fit, trim fit, sharp fit, modern fit, tailored fit, classic fit, traditional fit, and it all leads to confusion into you thinking it fits like that when you really look like that. So there's, a, there's, there's companies out there who have tried to solve this problem by shipping you a department store in a trunk or sending a commissioned salesperson to your house for a true fitting. And while innovative and, and somewhat effective, Ultimately, they cost more than the average guy wants to spend. Eight Omakase is a complete solution. You get, a, you get the stylish curation of a trunk club, the, uh, the made-to-measure of Truemaker, the impeccable service of Nordstrom, and the, uh, the gift experience of 5.4, all at a value 30 to 50% lower than our competitors. So for $250 a quarter, you get eight packages of custom-styled, made-to-measure clothing delivered to your door each year. We've also built this around a completely frictionless process because we know how much guys hate to shop. It, it's really simple. All you need to do is fill out a style profile, complete the sizing algorithm, and then what we do is we pour ourselves a glass of scotch because we're done. The whole thing takes about three minutes, including the scotch, depending on hev how heavy of a pour you are, I guess. Um, we, we know the men's fashion market is big. Last year it was $62 billion. Uh, but instead of just breaking out the normal Tam, Sam, and Som numbers, what we did is we ran a smoke test. We gave ourselves three and a half months and a really small Facebook spend. And what we ended up with is 109 customers, over 1,600 leads, a 7% lead conversion rate, which is higher than we expected, an 8% churn rate, which is much lower than we expected, and we even had an NBA player sign up, which was pretty exciting to us. We thought that was pretty cool. So we knew we had something. And, it, and after taking a few months to perfect the product and build out the back end of the website, we're ready to crank. In fact, it's kind of a big day, not just because we're here, but today's the day we officially turn the Jets on the customer acquisition. So we're really starting to go. And the team that's building this, we, we've built rocket ships before. Uh, six times in e-commerce, twice in continuity, once in men fa men's fashion at companies like The Honest Company, 5-4 Clothing. We know how to grow big business. We know how to deal with hyper growth and especially the turbulence that comes with that. Ultimately, at Edo Mikase, we believe men's fashion is ripe for innovation. And the reason why is the, may, the way men want to shop and the way we're forced to shop are still miles apart. And what we've done is we've closed that gap, all while giving men a more powerful first impression when they walk into that boardroom and more seductive winks when you walk into that bar. Thank you. All right. Mike, I just want to congratulate you on finishing that pitch in exactly three minutes. I mean, that was like to the fucking millisecond. <laughs> So, so thank you, thank you. We appreciate that. Is there a prize for that one? Uh, no. Um, all right, so uh, what do you guys think? Questions? Uh, we're big customers of Trunk Club in our house. And great, great presentation, great, great name. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of Omakase. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about the brand and the experience and, and really why we need another you know, kind of alternative to Trunk Club, um, others, et cetera. Like, you're doing it at a small scale, but to get to a large scale is a kind of a whole other story. So how, how do you think about that differentiation? In terms of turning into a brand? Well, you, what, you know, really, the di like the difference, is it, is it price point primarily that you think is it sort of style with price point and Trunk Club's addressing the high end of the market and you're going to go to the, the lower end of the market? How, how do you think about your target customer versus right. those that are out there? Well, we know with, with fashion, it, it, the challenge we face in fashion is tough to protect, right? It's, it's, it, it's clothing. And so we do know that a, a part of it is, to, uh, is the race to customer acquisition because then eventually at some point you become a brand. Uh, one thing that we are trying to differentiate ourselves on, where if you ask anyone in our company, we'd actually tell you we're a service company more than a fashion company. And so we, we believe there's a tech play in this as well, 
we've been talking to a lot of different companies that have to do with both servicing as well as even in the, as far as the virtual reality world in terms of um, how that's going to affect fashion. And we do want to turn this into, into a, a service play as a big differentiator versus a lot of the traditional fashion brands. So uh, I actually have a question. So I actually used to run e-commerce for 5.4. Okay. Uh, and I'm close with D, and right, right. or formally close with them anyway. Um, they spent a lot of time building their brand, mm -hmm. you know, with celebrities, and you know, they were all about in the clubs with the five four, and you know, whatever. I forgot the designer's name. What's his name? You know, whatever. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, you know. So, are you guys doing that? I mean, you have one NBA player signing up, but what I've seen with these kinds of things is you really need to have your brand because brand awareness is the key, right. and paid acquisition is not gonna go that far. You need many, multiple touches on the consumer's mind in order to get them to buy anything. Right. So how are you going to do that? How are you gonna afford that? Because your, your CAC, I think, is gonna be much higher than you might think. Right. Well, so you, to, the short answer to the question is, is yes, we are uh, doing some of that. We're not, I, I'm not quite as young as those guys were when they started 5.4, so the clubbing thing isn't my scene. <laughs> but um, we, we are working with a number of relationships, both through uh, 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 the girl who handles our PR, as well as just through other connections. Um, perhaps the most recent name we're working with is Damon John to access his celebrity list. And we are, you know, a lot of that just comes down to hustle and just making the right connections. We do have, uh, you know, referral fees built in where, in, and our margins are healthy enough, I guess, where we can reward um, such a program and, and still, uh, the advantage of made to measure is we don't deal with the inventory. So there's zero cost until we, we, we actually get a sign up. Or a lot of traditional companies like Five Four, they do have to pay for the inventory up front, and that does eat into their margins. Yes, they're buying it from India, and they're paying nothing though. So, right, right. Well, okay, keep yeah. going. Well, so that, that's really one of the big things is uh, that gives us an advantage. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so we're major investors in uh, TrueMaker, so huge believers I in this, in this space. On them. No, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but they've made a bet, sort of, on that uh, human touch point right. as uh, you know, kind of a differentiator and a way to increase AOV and kind of make their economics work. I just want to understand what sort of insight did you have on the product side that made you think that eight um, packages uh, a year is the right model, and like, right. why do you think that's the right approach? So th there's a couple of reasons why we feel that. One, the number eight means you're not getting a package every month, and this is through a lot of surveying and questioning. We found that the monthly subscriptions, it takes over someone's closet, and they don't want their entire closet taken over. They just want a couple key nice pieces in there, which is why... Um, we go with eight instead of 12, and the quarterly subscription versus the monthly gives us a finance, it changes the financing model, where we basically get payment up front, and the cost is actually incurred throughout 90 days. The earliest happens at about 45 days. So we're essentially getting this huge cash float up front um, that we get to use, it basically sits in our bank account that we have to use for other things before we start incurring costs. All right, well, let's take one more question. I, I just think it's fun to disagree. I, I really don't like the name at all. Um, I just don't think it sounds like it has anything to do with clothes, and I don't understand the, the eight in there as well. I do love the story behind the name, right. but I just think as a consumer, it's great to have it memorable and have it sound like what you do. So I would absolutely I, <laughs> take a look at that. Um, I think I love subscription businesses, and there's like way too much to get into, but really interested in what your costs are, it sounds really expensive to deliver the service you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously really expensive to acquire customers. And I right. would love so, to hear about those, but it looks great. And I also uh, thought your user flow is really great on your site, on how you're ingesting people right. and you. inside of their head. Thank you. So I'm not all negative. Yeah. <laughs> well, in regards to the name, one, we, we know we can't be married to it. We, we do get polarizing opinions on it. So we, we have heard that before, and that's something we do have to consider. Um, in terms of margins, you know, based on the smoke test, we have an $83 uh, cost per acquisition, which is actually lower than, I, I come from the advertising world, and that's lower than, than we expected. Uh, once we get to scale, our costs drop tremendously, and it's projected through the first year to, get, to be closer to 58%. And so um, because of the inventory factor and things like that, the, the margins are actually really healthy in, in the major measure format. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, I know you're not a clubbing guy, neither am I, but <laughs> go nice. All right.